Hey everyone, today I want to talk about torque wrenches. So here I have several torque wrenches laid out and I'm going to show you how each one of these works. Now yes they do pretty much all do the same thing but you read them differently. And some of them also are bigger than others meaning that they measure in foot pounds rather than inch pounds. The way you know if it's a foot pound or inch pound um, torque wrench is just by reading the measurements here. So here you can see it says inch pounds there and if I go to the next one here, you can see FT-LB, which shows foot-pounds. Now there's also metric measurements on here, um, but we measure in standard for the engines that we work on. Next, have another torque wrench here. As you can see it says foot-pounds at the top, and this has a nice gauge to tell you um, the exact torque that you're at. Here, and these will be harder to read, but the measurements are right there on the shaft. So that one says inch pounds with tiny little numbers etched in. And this one says foot pounds with tiny little numbers etched in. And this, this one over here is a really cool one. This last one is a digital torque wrench. It's much bigger than the other ones. And it can handle all sorts of different kinds of measurements but it shows a digital display there. And up at the top right, you can see on that display, foot pounds. So currently I have it set to foot pounds. It does measure in inch pounds and um, metric measurings as well, but all of these have their limits. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to use them and how to read them. And um, while these tools are fairly expensive, they're easily um, rentable from places like O'Reilly's or maybe advanced auto parts, places like that. They rent torque wrenches for you, um, sometimes free of charge. You just have to put a deposit down. So these are tools that you can use at home on projects you're having, and it's uh, a great tool to make sure you're not over-tightening or under-tightening bolts. You wanna tighten them to the exact manufacturer specifications to make sure you're um, properly installing all the parts and bolts to your project. So let's take a look on how to use these. So this first torque wrench here does not have a ratchet end on it. In other words, this doesn't move. It's all fixed. Unlike my other torque wrenches I'm going to show you, um, this one doesn't move. So I can't turn that. So I just have to line it up how I want it. And I know that the flywheel bolt here is supposed to be at 50 foot-pounds. For this particular engine. So I have my flywheel holder here to help it stop from turning. And I'm just going to secure it with my arm and hand here too. And I push this down. Until I hit 50 foot pounds. So let's take a look and zoom in on that. So we're trying to get this flat piece on this pointer here that's attached to the arm all the way up here to 50 foot-pounds. So I'm looking in the, the black measurements here, because it's foot-pounds, and I'm pushing down so this arm's gonna rise up a little bit, or rather it's gonna um, stay where it is while the arm bends. So let's take a look at that real quick. Fifty foot-pounds, and then we can stop. So this torque wrench here is another one that does not have a ratchet in on it. So I just line it up like so, and we're going to do the exact same thing. Now this one has a slightly different reading mechanism. You can see here it has this little gauge, and it has a red arm and a black arm. Now I'll zoom into that in a second. So I'm going to set both of these to zero. The red arm also goes to zero. Now it turns because if I was turning this the other way, I'd want it to push the other direction. This red arm, once I'm done, it's going to mark exactly where the black arm stopped, telling me what my actual measurement was when I'm done. So let's take a look at that and zoom in. So like I said here, you can see the red arm and the black arm. The black arm is going to push that red arm once I push down on the tool. So let's take a look at that and try to set it to 50 foot down. go. 
So you can see there that the black arm stopped right at 50, or sorry, the red arm stopped right at 50, and the black arm came back to zero. So now I know that's the measurement that I, uh, I torqued that bolt down to. So this torque wrench does ratchet. So I can turn this freely in one direction and then it tightens in the other direction. And that's what this latch here is for. So here I can turn it freely that way and it tightens that way. And when I loosen that, just like a socket wrench, I can turn the other way and it tightens that way. And the other difference is I actually set my measurement first and then torque it down, which is a little different than the last ones that we've uh, we've looked at, where we tighten it down and it just reads the measurement. Here we set the measurement first, and the torque wrench. In a second, I'll show you how it's going to tell us that we hit that measurement. So it's going to be hard to see. I'll try to zoom in and I'll show you how exactly this reads. So here I turn this handle here. As you can see, this handle turns. And I want that zero to line up right with that center line, right there. And here, right above my thumb, you can see 50 with an arm that comes down, right above my line, and it lines up with zero. So that is 50 foot-pounds. So like I said, now that we have the, um, now that we have the torque wrench set to the right measurement, the right setting, the wrench is gonna tell us when it's tight enough. So if you can hear it, it's gonna make a small click and then you're also gonna see a slight bend here, a slight bend between the top and the, and the arm here. And that tells me I've gone far enough. Now, like all of the wrenches, that doesn't mean it's not gonna let me tighten anymore. I can certainly over tighten still. So I wanna make sure that once I hear that click, I stop. Cause I can, I can still continue tightening past that click and still strip or break a bolt. So once it clicks, I need to make sure I stop. Just like that, that's the click. Slight little bend and a click. So I'm clicking it multiple times, but I'm not pushing down. After that click there, if I wanted, I could continue pushing down towards the table, but that would be over tightening the bolt. Once it clicks, I'm tight enough. So this is um, essentially the same wrench we just looked at. Very, very similar, except it has a nice handy digital reading. So. When I turn this handle, I can pull the handle out and turn it, and that digital reading changes, going up by uh, 0.5 foot-pounds every time. The gray button allows me to change whatever unit I want to measure in, whether it be foot-pounds, inch-pounds, inch pounds, um, or uh, different me metric units. And then the red button is just the on and off button for the digital display. And the nice thing is it saves your measurement too, so it's still set to 50 foot-pounds, even though I turned it off. The way it tells me that I've uh, reached the desired torque is the same. You're going to see a small, or hear a small little click and see a small little bend, and the ratchet mechanism is the same. I can change the direction by turning this back piece like that. So it is nice because it's a much bigger tool, and when you're torquing to um, you know, 50 foot pounds is a bit tough, but if I was going more than that, a longer tool gives me a lot more leverage. And that's gonna help me get to the, to the desired torque. So here, if we hold everything down tight, right there's the click and I can stop. Again, there's the click. So there you have it. That's how you use all the different types of torque wrenches that we have in the shop. Again, while they do read a little bit differently, some have digital displays, some have displays written right on the tool, some have gauges, and others have a side measurement reading with arms that move like this. They are all doing the same thing. There's just different styles that different manufacturers have come up with. So any, any type of torque wrench you're using, don't be scared if it looks different. Just figure out how to read it and make sure that um, you have it set to the correct, uh, the correct units. So if you're measuring in foot-pounds, make sure you're in foot-pounds and not inch-pounds. If I was setting this bolt to 50 inch-pounds, it would be not nearly tight enough.
they'd be way too loose compared to 50 foot-pounds.